What a beauty. First time I've had one of these balancing bird type things where he's balancing on his tail and not usually on the beak, on the nose. So, and doesn't he work beautifully too? Nice and heavy. You can remove the two wings when you're packing it away, which makes life easier for carrying it around, but it balances very well indeed and it's very, very unusual. This is the first of five very, very nice articles I've received from Ray Hall, a professor of physics at Fresno University in California. And he and I have known each other for 20 years, or 10 or 20 years, and we do a lot of exchanging on interesting things. He's visited me in my flat, and I've met him at Atlanta as well, at Gathering for Gardener, so it's a marvellous thing to put in my collection, because I've already got several of these balancing things, but never had such a fine one with the tail balance instead of the beak, so a wonderful one. Great stuff to have. Here's another thing he sent me in that parcel, which is a very nice puzzle. It's beautifully made. It's got loads and loads of problems set, but it's basically, it's, um, it's a cube. It all comes apart. The pieces all come, come apart, um, but they're all joined with magnets. There's magnets on little cells there which move around in order to form an attractive force each time. There's no repul repulsion. It's a very clever way of, for even for very small children, for having things which can be taken apart and put together and it locks together because it's, it's um, there's quite a powerful little neodymium and magnets to do it. And you've then got a pack of problems set here, which is a, quite, a, quite a lot. There's a, enough to keep me going for the rest of this year, I think it is. And they're put into three categories, which are, I'll show the top three cards perhaps, which are the really difficult ones. So to go from a cube into that one, it's got four of those little things, which means it's a jolly hard puzzle. To make it go into that shape, which is flat and probably a bit easier, yes, it's three. And to go to that shape, curiously enough, it's, it's less pieces, perhaps. It's, and it's only two stars, so you've got three levels of difficulty for the thing, and there's more on the back as well. So I'm going to have a tremendous amount of fun with this, and it's very, very um, sort of easy to handle. It's very friendly in the hands, and the way that say, pieces go together and just slap together and stick there, uh, due to the magnetic force, is an extremely clever way of creating this puzzle. It's a well-known puzzle, but uh, to have it in that form, I think, is brilliant. It looks also very, very colourful, so I love that. Here's a strange one. He said, he went to this national park, so Seguero, some of the national park swamplands in California, western United States, and this is probably supposed to be a representative cactus or one of those tropical plants there. And he points out that you can sharpen a pencil easily enough, but you have trouble with the rubber because it's so close to the edge there, you can't rub things out very well. Not very practical, but never mind. I probably will get around to sharpening it, and that's all I do with it. But a nice, a nice looking bent pencil wooden pencil with a, with, a, with, a, with a lead in it and I'll have a go at trying to write something with it but I won't try rubbing it out because it won't work. <laughs> then he sent me a wonderful book here which is um, on the art of play. These wonderful people who are, um, I've been in touch with them um, for, for a long time, they're based in California and this is an extremely fine book on optical stuff and it includes uh, this, I think there's about four pictures, this is the best of them on the front page, where you have one of these more effects when you put it on top of it like this and you move it like this you get the extraordinary effects occurring like some of those circles you can't believe that though that peculiar looks like a little well it's attracting it as it's getting smaller and smaller and it comes from that just with a lot of lines in it you can see it turned upside down and this curious little material here raises the actual surface of the um, of the Moro sheet by about a tenth of a millimetre to make it focus better. It's a t it's a t if it's held a l tiny bit above the surface, it just makes for a better picture. And they've, done, they've got around the problem that way, which I think is very nice. And then you can swirl it to one side, swirl it to the other side. And there's a lot of extraordinary um, articles about, that's just one of them, in, in, the, in the book. It's a tremendous read for this, so I'm going to have a great fun in the next few weeks pouring through this and looking at all the amazing things they've discovered um, by research out there. So that's going to be a great one to, um, to dive into. And the last one is, I think, my favourite one. 
in my thank you note to um, to Ray, I said this is something I've never seen in my life. This is extraordinary. It's got here a silver mug with a nice reflective surface, and it's got one of these funny um, saucers, but it's got ridges in it for a strange reason. When you look at it like that, you can see a flower, and, the, and but there's no sign of the other creature, which is a butterfly. And yet the butterfly appears when I get it into the viewing place. There's a butterfly there which is invisible to you. Where has it gone? How does it appear? Where does it come from? Well, the answer is it's on the back. These are ridges which will stick up. You can, you can hear it's got ridges. And there's a butterfly on that side. And there's the flowers on that side. And when you put the two together, you can reflect it. So you're looking partly down directly at that and partly into the mirror and then down on the hidden side and it makes it appear a very, very nice version of the um, cup and saucer, I've, I've called these anamorphic, cylindrical anamorphic pictures, which is just fabulous. It's the best version I think I've ever seen. So what a, what a wonderful parcel that was to receive from this great friend Ray. <laughs> it's brightened me up for the whole month.